Hello and welcome back to Tranquility Du Jour, nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. This is episode 614. Happy September and all about September serenity and embracing this new season. Even though I know we still have like 20 or, you know, the high teens by the time we listen to this, but numbers of days left in summer. So it's not really full yet. But anyway, we're going to be moving in that direction. So this podcast is going to be giving some tips for that. And I am your host, Kimberly Wilson, bringing you tranquility through this medium since 2005. Now, a few things I want to mention before we dive in is a gentle reminder to hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can do that via Spotify, Apple Podcast, or Amazon, and I've got links to that in the show notes, which can be found at KimberlyWilson.com slash 614. Also, if you are new to Tranquility Du Jour, a big welcome, and you can find out more at KimberlyWilson.com slash new that gives lots of insights into the philosophy, or I like to say tranquilosophy, around Tranquility Du Jour. Also, we have some fun things on the horizon, and one that I have been working on for months now, which are digital courses, Tranquility Du Jour style. So, we have five micro courses on each of the tenets, mindfulness, creativity, compassion, style, and wellness. One full tenets course that contains all five of them and my brand new mental health course, which was going to be a micro course, but then it became quite large. And so it is no longer a micro course. It is a full on course. And you can join the wait list and then you will get a special offer uh, at the end of this week, and then they open to everyone next week. So be sure to join the waitlist for this. Also, we've got the fall virtual retreat happening on October 14th, and I'm very excited to say that that will be happening live from Paris. So I would love to have you join me in Paris virtually. Also, Tranquility Salon. So this is my monthly offering that has tranquility tools and private podcasts and PDFs and lots and lots of kind of love and treats. I mean, three, the idea is to make it very simple, but also tangible. And September's included a self-care checklist or challenge, actually. And so would love your support. A big thank you to those of you who have supported and joined and to know it's only $9 a month or $99 for the year. And then you get a really sweet workbook that comes with it. All right. So, oh, and last thing is the Coterie. Coder is my year-long program, and it includes tons of live events and all sorts of really fun things from monthly masterclasses to the quarterly virtual retreats to movie nights to an event at my home. Anyway, the wait list for that is up on the website, and you can find out more at KimberlyWilson.com slash Coterie. And we'd love to have you join us in 2024. Just crazy that we are already talking 2024. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, too, is that I <laughs> erroneously posted my dress rehearsal video as my solo video. And the funny thing about that is, like, if it had been intentional, it'd be another thing, like if my dress rehearsal had gone much smoother. But what's interesting is the dress rehearsal actually left me in tears. I am not much of a crier, and I'm definitely not a crier publicly. And yet I was with this. And so I did not realize until it was probably about six weeks later after posting the video. And I did watch it a couple times. And I remember thinking, I thought I did than that. Or I really didn't think I missed that step. Anyway, then Julie, who runs the festival, posted everyone's videos. You can see the full show. I've got a link to it in a blog post I did this weekend, and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But she posted, and I was like, you know, maybe a week later, I thought, well, let me just watch my piece, you know, 
ah, I still haven't watched my two group pieces. I was in Sleeping Beauty and then this Flower Waltz. I still have not watched my performance in those. But I was like, oh, let me just see this. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't miss those steps. And then I was like, oh my goodness, I posted the wrong video. So anyway, I have righted that in this recent blog post, along with sharing some really fun photos that Julie recently shared from the red carpet, which is what happened before our awards dinner. And just a really sweet and some really sweet photos from the awards dinner. The photographer captured whenever I was named as the gold winner. And I'm like, just over the moon, you know, and it's like, you can just see it on my face. And so it was just, it was really sweet. Cause of course, you know, you don't remember those things and they're not captured unless they are captured and they were. And then there's also a few professional shots that were done in my pink tutu that I did for Sleeping Beauty, that piece. And Anyway, so some fun things for um, you if you're interested at all, if you like tool eye candy and you're interested in seeing a two minute and 45 second performance or my solo. And um, you can find that, of course, over on the blog, but I will put it in the show notes. So thank you for all of your sweet support about my ballet journey. And I have to say I got back to the bar this weekend and it felt so good, even though it's just been two and a half weeks that I haven't been able to do ballet just because I was healing from the hip surgery, which went quite smoothly, by the way. Thank you for your well wishes. But um, yeah, so getting back to the bar felt so good. I took a class Friday night and then I did a private session with Sean, my teacher, yesterday. And I was just glowing afterwards. And I kept saying to Tim, oh, my gosh, that just felt so good. And, you know, it's like I always love Sean's classes, but I'm not usually like, oh, my gosh, that was amazing. <laughs> Sometimes I'm in tears, you know, because it's like hard. But it just felt so, so great. And so it's so nice, right, to just love something with your body so much. And, it, you know, the piece that was really that feels amazing is not having that pain in my hip anymore with that metal band being gone. It's amazing. You feel so much lighter and yeah, it's still sore from surgery, from the removal of it, but it's very different and so freeing. It feels so, so, so God, I'm so like incredibly grateful. All right, so that's it for updates. I just wanted to fill you in on and say thank you for being along for this insane journey. And it's been over a year, right, with the whole hip thing. But then also, you know, with this uh, performance piece, and I just cannot believe <laughs> I just did the wrong video and did not realize it for so long. It's so interesting. And I guess the piece that really kind of stands out to me is just like, you know, I was so upset after that performance and the dress rehearsal. And then that's what I put out there for like six weeks and didn't even realize it. Anyway, we're funny people, aren't we? Us, us humans. <laughs> um, you know, that's one thing I say to my clients a lot of just like, I mean, we're so, I mean, we're human. We are, you know, filled with like these quirks and these eccentricities and you know it's what makes us special and unique <laughs> also a little bit challenging okay so let's talk on that note <laughs> let's talk about september serenity so one thing i wanted to mention here is just a little insight into this time of the year you know i have to say like i'm looking out onto the woods right now and there are some orange and red leaves popping out. And it is so exciting to me. This really is my favorite time of the year. And I do think of September or fall in general as like, you know, a time of renewal, a time of transformation. And, you know, my hope is also a little transformation and a sense of slowing down and also a sense of turning inward. So let's think about how we can kind of cultivate this mindfulness and tranquility in our lives. And as opportunities really for self-care and reflection. So, you know, as the leaves change, we get colder weather and we add more layers and the return to routines after summer's, you know, fluidity, you know, I like to think of. For a lot of people, like say if you have kids or whatever, then, you know, your summers were probably topsy-turvy from 
you know, not having routine. And then I think for many people who don't have kids or who are retired or are just living a different type of life, it's like even yours is probably just a little different. I mean, summer, there's something about it. It's it's very playful and there's a lot of freedom and there's, a, you know, for a lot of people, there's some travel, but it is hard because the routines may not be in place the same way. So let's talk about some kind of self-care rituals that might be helpful as we think about, you know, this time of the year and things that might be accessible to us now that weren't maybe in the summer. So I'll give an example. Over the weekend, we hit a couple farmers markets, and I just love farmers markets, and especially out here in the woods, it's like they're small, they're sweet. There's like just a few vendors, and you know, it's a, it's a very big contrast from like the Dupont Circle <laughs> farmers market in Washington D.C., which is like, ma'am, tons of vendors. It's so lovely, but it's like chaos, right? So it's very different out here. But I will say one thing that I loved was I. On- found cider donuts. And cider donuts are such a treat. I didn't have those in Oklahoma, or at least I was not aware of them. And so I've just discovered them living out on the East Coast. And they are this is such a treat this time of the year. So we immediately, we, we actually ate them as we were leaving the farmer's market. We were so excited for it. But as we think about this time of the year and some of the special things that come with it and rituals in general, one thing I think of is autumnal aromatherapy. Over the weekend, my partner's birthday is coming up. And I think I bought him four or five candles. I'm like, what is happening? But there was a pumpkin spice one. And then he loves all the like tree ones, you know, that are like kind of the Christmas tree ones, like the fir and pine and you know, things along those lines. And so anyway, I kept seeing a bunch of those different kind of little artisanal candles and and was picking those up. And there's something that's just really sweet, right? With this time of the year, we've got fall scents like cinnamon, apple, pumpkin spice, and, you know, thinking about ways to have these like candles or aromatherapy or, you know, even, um, you know, flowers or, uh, simmering on the stove, that sort of thing. Going on nature walks is also a really sweet thing to do this time of the year. So mindful nature walks, going out into local parks or forests and connecting with the changing foliage. And like I said, it's already happening here in West Virginia. And really one of the big things, and I mentioned this in this week's newsletter, so I hope everybody got a copy of the love note that came out on Sunday. This idea of really connecting to the senses. So noticing when we're out in nature, walking, being, breathing, there's something really wonderful about that and our ability to connect to our senses. Have a warm beverage ritual. And let me just say, I have a new tea meditation for you over on the YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. And that's just youtube.com slash tranquilly du jour. But you know, there is something so grounding. And I will say when I drink iced beverages versus hot beverages, it's so different energetically what I notice. So, you know, the iced are really great, but I do feel like they treat my nervous system differently. And warm beverages are just very, very grounding. So think about herbal teas, teas or matcha, um, hot apple cider, homemade pumpkin spice lattes. I know people are really into those. And just thinking about ways to, you know, have a ritual around it. And again, I have a whole video on that for you, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Of course, creative expression. So autumnal themes like arts, crafts, journaling. So really embracing your artistic side. I mean, one thing that I love is just bringing nature in this time of the year, right? From the acorns to the pine cones to the leaves. And you can do some really sweet home decor. I mean, definitely great tablescapes with what you find out in nature. And number five is hugga, right? Hugga inspired home decor. So creating a cozy, tranquil living space with soft blankets, warm lighting, plush pillows. I'm all about like faux fur. And I've got this chenille. I call it chenille. I I don't know really what the material is, but it's really this like soft kind of like light, fluffy 
blanket that I got years ago, and it's actually a bit bare thin, but I love it. And I like to tra- take it with me whenever I'm going, at least on road trips, because I just love to cuddle up with it. Even over the weekend, uh, my partner set up a TV out side on the deck and we watched movies and I was wrapped up in that blanket. And, you know, there's just something just so cozy about that. And it's so cozy about being outside. And last but not least is thinking about a meditation and a mindfulness exercise that allows you to really drop into the beauty of fall. So practicing mindfulness in your daily life. And one of the best ways to do that, of course, right, is the senses. I mean, Smell the coffee that you are sipping. See what is in front of you. Listen to the sounds, right? It's like all these things are ways for us to constantly be connecting to nature and to ourselves and to this sense of being grounded. The other thing I wanted to mention are just a few kind of tranquil tips for the season, right? So A morning mindfulness ritual, whatever that might be, like deep breathing, a short gratitude meditation, some way to set a positive tone for the day. Of course, there again, it might be your warm beverage or ritual, right? Some way in which you are able to really like drop into the moment and the experience. And that also, again, sets this tranquil tone for the day. Number two is like a tech detox. So reducing your screen time and reaping those mental health benefits of just being like disconnected from time to time, whether or not you, maybe you want to take your phone when you go on a walk because you want to be able to snap photos, but when you're not snapping photos, putting putting the phone down or away or on do not disturb so that you can really be with the experience. Maybe even a little bit of a self-care check-in. So, you know, one of the things, and I like to do these in our virtual retreats, but it's just this regular like checking in, okay, what's working? What needs a little tweaking? What's going well, right? So again, we want to acknowledge that and also notice like, huh, I'm missing X, Y, and Z from my regular routine and I want to build it back in. You know, last month for the Coterie, we focused on self-care, and I've got those 15 kind of healthy habits that I recommend. And, you know, I realized like two of mine were taken away with this surgery, right, from mindful movement, so ballet. I couldn't do that for a few weeks. And then baths, and I, you guys, I did not even realize, I completely forgot that, of course, baths were not going to be allowed for a bit. And the nurse, the discharge nurse was telling me that. And I almost cried. It was just like one of those things where you're like, it really, I mean, dance and, you know, moving my body, right? And baths are like my go-to self-care rituals. And when both of those are removed, I was like, oh, no. So, of course, I mean, what I did instead is I compensated by doing a lot more journaling than I normally would. So, you know, sometimes we just have to make shifts based on what's going on in our world. So for you, what might that be? What needs just a little bit of shifting? And then one other tranquil tip that I just want to, you know, recommend is reconnecting. So, you know, during the summer months when other people were away or you were away, you may have lost touch. And so is there a way to kind of reach out and make sure that you get dates set up or connections set up or I'm thinking of you set up, right, so that you can in turn kind of rebuild those connections that may have been lost during the the somewhat chaos, right, of the summer months. So again, I just want to reiterate the idea of embracing September with this sense of mindfulness and tranquility. And of course, infusing your own style and personality into the way in which you experience this time of the year. And you may be in an area where, you know, seasons don't change or what have you, and that's fine. I do still think that energetically that there is some sort of a shift at least I've always noticed that I've always just loved this time of year and so what is it for you even if like say you live in Miami and you're like every day is the same or San Diego or something like that you know where there's not a ton of shifts it's like still what can you do to 
um, em- embody and embrace this uh, this change and this transformation. Maybe it's not happening around you, but maybe it's happening within you. All right, loves, I just want to say a big thank you, as always, for tuning in. And I hope you will join the waitlist for the digital courses to learn all about those and be the first to know about them whenever I send information out later this week. And I just want to say a big thank you, of course, as always, for tuning in, for listening, for being part of my journey. And I know a lot of you have been part of this journey for um, like 20 years. So I just want to say a big, big thank you. And again, another big thank you to everyone who filled out that survey as I'm going to be rewriting and re-releasing Tranquilista with an eye toward midlife. So thank you so much for being so vulnerable and sharing so much about, you know, the struggles and the challenges of midlife. So I look forward to doing my best to represent that for you in this new book, which I'll turn to after the digital courses are launched. And, you know, a reminder, please sign up for Love Notes if you're not already. There's a link to my seven books and planners. Also, of course, follow along on Instagram, YouTube, and threads, although I do not do much there. I am there. And uh, of course, TDJ by Kimberly, my locally sewn eco fashion line. And if you have a moment to share a review on Apple Podcasts, Amazon, or Goodreads, the book or podcast, I would be so, so grateful. All right. Thanks for tuning in. And I wish you a delicious uh, pumpkin spice, if that's your thing, uh, week ahead. Thank you.